All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to some structure-free learning. And in this video, we're gonna go back to some mechanics and materials and do an example problem calculating normal stress due to bending moment. Now I've got this cantilever beam with a constant cross section, an upside down T-beam with a linearly distributed load starting from zero to four kilonewtons per meter. And what we wanna find in this problem is to draw the normal stress profile at the location of the maximum moment and then calculate the resultant force that's in the flange down here over there somewhere. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we gotta do is find what this maximum moment is and figure out where it is. So the first thing we want to do is draw the shear and moment diagram so that we can locate where along the length of the beam the maximum moment occurs because that's going to be associated with the maximum normal stress and it'll give us an indication of which side of the cross section either the top or the bottom is in tension or compression. I've kind of set this up a little bit. I, I drew a more simplified model of this cantilever beam as a stick figure with the linearly distributed load and you know normally when you draw a shear and moment diagram you want to solve for reactions first but in this case because we have a free end over here that free end has zero moment and shear so we can just go ahead go start going from left to right and draw the shear and moment diagram because we know we're going to start from zero on the left with the free end and so here the shear diagram v in units of kilonewtons and this should be actually kilonewtons per meter and this is three meters in length and so if I draw a shear diagram I have a if you remember I have a linearly distributed load that means my shear diagram will be parabolic x squared right and starting from zero starting from zero here because of the free end I am decreasing at a changing rate really so parabolically I'm decreasing parabolically and the area the amount of change in shear is the area under the loading and this this change in shear is equal to the area of this load, which is just going to be one half the base times the height, which is four kilonewtons per meter. And this is equal to doot, 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 uh, six kilonewtons. And so I just go ahead and draw a shear diagram that hopefully I can draw a nice line here. Let's see. And okay, that looks kind of parabolic, right? And that's minus six kilonewtons. And what that tells also is that my reaction right here on the support should be six kilonewtons upwards. Hey, now I want to draw my moment diagram. And if my shear diagram is x squared, then I know that my moment diagram will be on the order of x cubed. And my moment will have units of kilonewton meters. And again, here, because I'm at a free end and my value here is zero, I am decreasing again. My slope is negative. So I anticipate having a negative. My shear value is negative here. So my moment, I anticipate, will have a negative slope here. Here, I have a zero shear. So I should have a zero slope for the moment right there. Whoa, what happened there? Right here like this. So my moment curve should be horizontal here. And then it should be a cubic function that that decreases like so. Oh, I kind of missed that spot right there. And this has some value. And the change in moment is equal to the area of the shear diagram. The area of a, parabol a parabola where one end, the slope is zero. This change in moment is equal to one third the area of a parabola where one end is the slope is zero is one third base times the height and here one third times three meters times six kilonewton and that makes this six kilonewton meters and so I have here negative six kilonewton meters and that also tells me that I have a moment over here of six kilonewton meters and my maximum moment is this value. Here is my maximum moment. And because of the way the orientation of the moment is on my cross section, so this implies that my moment is being applied like this, the six kilonewton meters at the support. And my compression is on the bottom, top is in tension. All right, so now we have a value for the moment here. And the next thing that we want to do is draw the stress profile at this location. And that's going to involve using our, our bending formula and we'll do that next. All right, so now we want to calculate the normal stresses in the cross section at the location of the maximum moment, which is right at the support. In order to do that, we need to use the most selfish equation in the whole wide world where here this is that this normal stress due to bending is negative my over i, my i, right? 
And so here, in this case, we already know what the maximum moment is. And this, this, uh, uh, this equation, the way that it's been derived in a lot of textbooks with a negative sign in front of it, assumes that this moment is positive. And in this case, our maximum moment, m max, is a negative moment that causes compression on the bottom. m max is minus 6 kilonewton. And so we know m max, but in order for us to describe the distance from the the centroid or the neutral axis to whatever location where we want the stress, we need to know where the centroid is. And we also need to know what the moment of inertia of this entire cross section is. So the first thing that we need to do in order to apply the bending formula here is to calculate section property. And the first thing that we want to do is calculate the centroid, the geometric centroid, which is y bar is equal to the sum of a y over sum of a. And here, in order to do that, the first thing you need is a reference or a datum. And so in my datum here, I will choose the bottom here. Bam, right here. This will be my reference or my datum. And I will break this up into this T-shape, two rectangles. I'll break this up into this area here. I'll call that one. And then I'll break it up into a second area here. And I'll call this one two. So now I just have to apply this relationship here. So some, the first area is A1, which is going to be 60 millimeters times 20 millimeters. And the centroid of one, the centroid of area one to the reference, or the distance to the centroid of area one from the reference is a half of 20 millimeters. So that's 10 millimeters plus the area of region 2, which is also 20 by 60, 20 by 60 millimeters. Oh, that should have been a millimeters here. OK, and if I, if I haven't put the units in, and uh, just go ahead, and the, the, all these units are in millimeters, all right? This location right here is the centroid of 2 is 30 millimeters from the the T right here, if you will, the flange. And so this would be uh, 30 plus 20. So this is 50 millimeters. The distance of centroid 2, or the centroid of area 2, to the reference here. And then divided by the total area of my cross section, which is 60 times 20 plus 20 times 60. And this, if I calculate this, this is why the distance from the bottom to the neutral axis location. So I'll just call that YB. If I substitute some numbers, this is going to be 30 millimeters. And so my location of my neutral axis, which I will put in purple, 30 millimeters. And so my neutral axis location is, bam, right here from the reference is YB equal to 30 millimeters. And that's YB for Y bottom to the top is equal to 80 minus 30, which is 50 millimeters. And now I want to use the parallel axis theorem to calculate my moment of inertia about the neutral axis. So I'll call this I uh, and A, which is equal to the sum of the moment of inertia of a section about itself plus A I D Y I squared and this would all be this right here and so for the first area this area one the moment of inertia of itself is 112 the base 60 times the height 20 cubed plus the area which is 60 times 20 times the difference between if you will let's use uh, this like uh, orange right here it would be this would be dy1 this difference right here that would be dy1 which is just you know 30 minus 10, which is, and then this will be squared, plus the moment of inertia of the second area, which is 112, 20 is the base times the height, 60 cubed, plus 20 times 60. And again, the difference between the centroid of area 2 and, uh, and the distance, so this distance here, this distance would be dy2 and in this case that is just 30 minus 50 squared and notice that it, you know if it's negative or positive it doesn't matter because it'll be squared and if you run some numbers here what you'll get here is uh, 1.36 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth and now with these section properties we're ready to calculate the stresses or the normal stresses at the top and bottom of the cross section